All right, everyone, we're here with our next stranger. Um, could you tell us your name or what you'd like to be called? You don't have to say your actual name. Um, and I'll, just a little Jacqueline. about yourself. Jacqueline? And um, why are you on Omegle today? Because I don't have friends and I'm bored and I want to meet new people. No. Yeah, it 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 sounds like a sounds like a very very stressful situation you're in. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about like uh, your 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 th thoughts of like relationships and boys and stuff? Is that something that you'd want to kind of vent about? Do you want to vent about it? If you want to vent, that's that's there. That's this is the place for it. You know, it's not even that it's just the feeling of somebody being there is like way better than not like being alone what is it about being alone that is it scary is it like how do you what do you how do you feel when you're alone you just feel alone like you drown out in your thoughts like you overthink mm. Mm. and um in your in your situation like um do you feel like you have someone that you can you can talk to yeah yeah which is my ex but he's not really always there anymore how but it was like cause my was an alcoholic like growing up and stuff so i had to take care of her and she was like the closest person I had since my dad wasn't in the picture. And then, like, when I lost her and I moved away from, like, everybody that I knew, I got used to being alone, and then, like, I met somebody, and I told them, like, if you're going to leave, then don't even, like, get involved, because that's going to hurt. So. Well, I just want to say off the bat that, um, that, that, you 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 deserve someone that everyone deserves a person and deserves respect from people and honesty right and straightforwardness and that you shouldn't settle for anything less than that okay like just putting it out there for you um uh do you feel like numb like what what is it like Oh, probably hard to talk about. It's like an attachment thing, like just feeling like somebody's there. It's like, you know? Yeah, that's why Omegle is is good. You know, like, I mean, you have a lot of people jacking off too. You know, <laughs> disgusting, and you get a lot of creeps. But it's also if you need. If you want a connection, like that's it's an outlet, you know. Um, have you ever thought about going to a, a therapist to to talk to someone about this, like someone like one on one in person kind of thing? I did because after my mom died, she put me on like three therapists that would come see me like Wednesday, and one would see me every day, like weekdays. And then, like, one would just see me, like, sometimes in school or something. But I didn't like it because, um, Why didn't you like it? It just felt weird talking to somebody that wouldn't understand and they, they think they do because that's their job and they're, they're like, qualified or whatever. And they just like diagnose you with all types of like mental illnesses when you really just um, yeah these these like labels of like it it doesn't seem to I mean in one way it helps right because like if there's chemically something wrong like there may be medication to help, yeah. 
but I mean, really, like uh, from what I sense is like you just want someone to be present with you. You just want you just want like human contact, right? That's it. No. Yeah, kind of, but he was really like the only person I've opened up to about like everything. And so he would be the only one that understood. Yeah. yeah. That takes time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, how long were you with him? Six months. Yeah. Is um so is is your is your dad a helpful person to to talk to about this, like to bring this up? He's not helpful at all. We just are two people living in the same house. We'll barely talk about anything. What is it? What? What is it about his behavior that makes you say that? It's just not like the way a relationship should be between a parent and their child. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else would you like to? Is there anything that you know you want to? talk about that's been going on other than other than all of this stuff mm. um, I just feel like um my ex or whatever he like should have kept his word type stuff because he told me that like he promised that he wouldn't like me and he would like be there no matter like because I told him like I didn't want to get in a relationship because we're young and, you know, he can't, he's going to want to have fun and all types of stuff and not settle down. And it's going to hurt me more than anything because of what I've been through and I just wanted, like, something stable, like somebody to actually be there. And wasn't always there. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I'm hurt about it. Like, I mean, yeah, I am, but it's not like it's like destroying my life. It's just overthinking, and then like I got on drugs and stuff because I wanted to not feel it. Yeah. What do you what do you think about uh, about that? Like, are you are you past the drugs now? Are you still doing them? Are you what is that? Um, it's not that bad anymore because he he's still like he came back or whatever. But it's not like I know he's gonna like go off. But I know we're like stuck. Like it's always gonna be. He's always gonna come in and out my life. Cause we'll like go off for like a few weeks, maybe a month, and then we'll be back. It's toxic. Yeah, in a in a, uh, I mean, this is tough, right? Cause like in a situation like this, like he's already proven himself to not be a person that's going to be there all the time. Um, and, and it's also like, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I, I think it's like, you know, the younger you, the younger you are, like the more people just kind of want to explore other things, you know, and I don't, I don't know. I'm 17 and he's 21, so yes. Yeah. 
I mean, this, this, like, I, I, I guess in what, in what way can I help? Yeah, I, I th th you know, there's this book that I have been reading, I guess, that deals with something similar to this, which is this idea that we can get so caught up in a story that we tell ourselves, you know, like we have this idea of who we are is like, it's our own story, right? And that like, that like, if we're aware of our emotions, if we if we kind of like realize that we're getting caught up in our emotions, that's the thing that sends us into a downward spiral. And that realizing like I mean this I'm not I'm not I mean the situation I mean I can I can sense is very you know, very intense and you know I remember one of my first loves too and how just intense it was. That like, um, that, that, that knowing that this is just temper, this is just a temporary feeling and that the way to make it, the way to, the way for it to pass, the, the, the most smoothly is to actually accept the way that you feel, you know, like accept how fucking awful it feels like it fucking sucks so bad. Like it's the worst feeling in the world, but like running away from it will only prolong the toxicity in your mind and in your body, you know, and also thinking like there are 300, I don't know what state you're in. What state are you in? Me too. I'm in Florida. But like thinking like there are 20 million people in Florida and you just met one guy. There are literally 20 million. Yeah, like, but you know, not like it's not just like a regular, you know, I, like my little boyfriend or whatever. Like I love him. It's like the bond that we had was like way different than anything. Yeah. Which I would have to like, get into details and stuff to explain that, which for sure. Yeah, you don't yeah, obviously, you know. I think I think it's really hard to it's really hard to recognize our feelings. It's really hard to recognize and to like actually feel I don't know feelings it's hard to feel feelings um and and to then let it go but recognizing that this is it's it's temporary like i, I like I, I don't want to discount any of the of things of what you're feeling but it's i mean i you know, i mean this is why i'm not a therapist <laughs> you know yeah but it's just so it's it's tough because it's because what you're doing is like like when you when when you go out and you meet a guy like that and you're so intensely with him like that's living you know that's like you are f putting your heart on the line and it sounds like he was as well in some way you know or else you guys wouldn't have been able to have that bond and like that that boldness that you have in putting yourself out there and trusting someone that's living you know that's really living everyone else like oh like they're tiptoeing around and they don't want to commit or they don't want to trust or they have you know like 
that's playing it safe. Like life is about putting yourself out there like you have. So in that way, you should be really, really proud of yourself, you know? Like that. I think that should be recognized. Um, and then the future, just thinking, you know, like the more that you kind of throw yourself into how you actually feel accepting it, being aware of it, and then letting it go, I think that's the way to, to process it in the healthiest way possible, you know? I mean, that, that's really all. It's not it's not a quick fix, you know, it's not a quick fix, but it's and it's not easy either. But mm, I don't know. It's hard to like understand unless like you knew like the situation or were like in my shoes type thing. Definitely. But it's like my mom when she was an alcoholic like my whole life or whatever until like two years ago when she passed away but she passed away because she was she was drunk and then the house caught on fire so but i had to like take care of her and stuff like make sure she wouldn't like get in the car and drive and take her home so she wouldn't be calling people like i remember doing that since i was four years old until two years ago but um, none of my family was really there, especially not my dad. Like, I didn't get a letter or nothing from him that whole time. So my mom was, like, really all I had. And then I lost that, and I moved away from everybody that I knew, like, friends and stuff that I went to school with. And I didn't really want to make friends here. Like, I sat by myself in school and stuff. And then one day this girl had texted me that was friends of people that I went to school with. And she was like, do you want to, I live in Ocala, you know where that is? And she's like, do you want to go to Gainesville with me? And we can go to this like apartment, like with a bunch of her friends and stuff. And one of the dudes that I lived here, my ex-boyfriend is his cousin. And we just met there or whatever. And basically, like, two weeks after that, I went back. Well, we were going, like, back and forth, like, every, like, few days we would go back to Gainesville. And, like, two weeks after we met, like, he wanted to get with me, like, together. And I was, like, I explained to him, I was, like, I don't know about all that because I'm going to get, like, if I get attached to you and you leave, it's going to hurt because I already had, like, the one person that I, my mom, and she was gone, and I didn't have anybody. So I was so used to being alone. I was like, I want to either stay, like, being alone and not having to depend on anybody to be there, you know? And if it was like that, it can't be temporary. Like, we're going to have to be, like, permanent because and it can't be, like, temporary. You're going to have to stay or is gonna like really like fuck me up in the head and he was like he promised he would and all that stuff. And he was there until his mother of his child, he has a three year old, and the mother of his child came and he was cheating on me with her. And I found out about it, and I was like, we're young, we make mistakes, like, and I forgave him, but then he did it again with other people, and, so, and then he left, like, he just, he left, because he was like, I don't even know why he left, he just left, because he said, he didn't really say much, he was just, he wasn't, like, feeling like anymore, he felt like he was, like, messing me up and I was like what's gonna mess me up is you not trying to fix yourself and leaving rather than me trying to 
help you fix yourself and like us be better people, try to make ourselves better people and stay together because people make mistakes and you just can't always, you know, you gotta give people second chances, which I did. But I don't know. So where he like the boy of my mom being on. Could you repeat that last thing? I didn't hear that. I said he like filled the void of my mom being gone, so you feel like now now that that void so he filled that void and now he's gone, that it's like it's like this kind of grieving process that's that's both associated with your mom and him? Yeah. It's like I go from having somebody that's there and then not having somebody that's not having anybody and then having somebody and then like not really having them, but he's still around, but not really like he wants to be, but he just wants to like party and have fun and go mess around with a bunch of people. Yeah, having him partially in your life doesn't make it any doesn't make it easier. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like because you had to take care of your mom since you were younger that you were forced to be an adult younger when you were younger? Yeah. How did that how did that influence you, do you think? I had to like grow up faster and like realize things. Where I couldn't really like be a child and like play around and stuff. It was like I have to make sure she's straight, I'm straight. I guess maybe a positive of, of all this is is that now you know you're in a situation where you don't have to take care of anyone but yourself you know yeah. that's pretty that's in one way that's a liberating thing mm -hmm. you can do you can do whatever you want with your life like anything you can do anything anything you want like what is something what is something that you've always wanted to do that you've never been able to do maybe that could be something to to think about Yeah, take care take care of yourself, you know. What are the things that that you want to do? Because it sounds like for your whole life you've always taken care of someone else. And it's distracted you from you from your own relationship with yourself. It's kind of Well, before um, before we get going, um, is there anything else that you'd like to say or share with people that are watching this, or maybe some pieces of advice from your life? Because it sounds like you know you are a you are young, but you have a lot of life experience and a lot of wisdom that I don't you know. Do you have anything you'd like to share with people? Any any advice, maybe? No matter like what goes wrong in your life, still try to be the best you can be. Like, even if people did wrong things to you, don't try to be 
a bad person and don't let things make you become evil. Sorry. Be a good person. Keep a good attitude. No. Well, Jacqueline, right? It's Jacqueline. Well, Jacqueline, if you if you want to keep in touch or you want to do another video or just talk or something, my email is right here, Building Bridges five hundred five. Okay. Um. Oh. And um. Yeah, I'm gonna post this video right now, so you can go back and. I don't know if there's something, if there was something helpful or not helpful at all or whatever. You just want to like listen to something. Um, I have a bunch of interviews on there with other people and, you know, yeah, feel free to, feel free to reach out if you ever need to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was nice talking to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you later. Um, well. Oh.